Hey, this is Rick, and this is another HTML5 game development tutorial using the TypeScript programming language. Uh, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, it's basically JavaScript, but with a lot of cool new features that are coming in, you know, ECMAScript 2016 uh, and beyond, but um, are not yet widely available in browsers. So TypeScript allows you to compile back to a version of ECMAScript that is available currently, uh, so it lets you use new features today. Uh, so anyway, today we are going to be uh, rendering sprites to our HTML5 canvas. Uh, we have, in our previous tutorials, we've basically been doing a lot of drawing to the canvas, you know, lines, rectangles, circles, shapes like that, polygons, uh, you know, which is fine, but not great for games. I mean, most of the time, when you're writing a game, you're, you're going to want to, in 2D, on, on a 2D canvas, you're going to be wanting to uh, draw images, um, primarily PNG files. Um, and, you know, the code is going to be available or is available at uh, typescriptgames.com slash image to canvas.html, uh, as well as, you know, all the code for previous tutorials is available on typescriptgames.com. Uh, so let, let's get started here. Um, the... Uh, I'm going to show you the basic template that I've got going on uh, for uh, for my games. I mean, so we all the games are going to have a game loop, and in this game loop, it's going to request animation frame on game loop, which basically means whenever a frame is drawn to uh, the canvas, uh, it's going to call this game loop function. Um, we're going to be we have this keyboard input class, which I had created in an earlier tutorial. Um, if you want that tutorial, it's advanced keyboard input uh, on typescriptgames.com slash keyboard input class dot html or a shorter version is goo.gl slash lowercase l capital L capital H capital G 7 lowercase q. Uh, so either of those will get you there. Uh, if you want to actually go to typescriptgames.com and find it. Um, TypeScript game. Let me go to the. Let me actually go there and show you how to get there. So here's TypescriptGames.com. You can scroll down uh, to, or you can go here and go to keyboard input. Um, this is like this is my basic keyboard input tutorial, you know, and it takes you through several pages. Um, part four is the one that actually, you know, covers covers this class, the keyboard input class. Uh, so, uh, if you uh, are interested or need uh, a refresher on keyboard input or what I'm doing there, uh, you can go back if you're already familiar, um, you know, no big deal, just uh, skip forward, you know, um, and put the code in and don't worry about it. So, going back to... Here, all right. So here's our keyboard input class. Uh, we, you know, this this windows on load. So here's our game loop. So the game loop requests an animation frame. It calls the input loop on the keyboard input class. Uh, it basically sets the fill style to black and draws a giant black rectangle across the whole screen. And this this is basically to clear out the canvas. Uh, there is a clear canvas method on context, but I believe that just sets the fill to white. Like it just or transparent or whatever, just, you know, usually I actually just draw a rectangle. Uh, but there is also, there. there's an alternative that is, you know, clear as the canvas, um, if you'd rather use that, uh, and under different circumstances you may. This Windows on Load uh, is basically the startup uh, function, if you're not familiar with this. I cover this, you know, early on in my tutorials. Um, so, you know, normally you'd get the canvas, you'd get the context, and you'd set up your keyboard input and you'd call the game loop. I'm adding in this image and I'm grabbing an image element out of my uh, DOM in my HTML. So I'm using the document get, uh, get element by ID. And if we go over to the HTML, here's this uh, image uh, and we gave it an ID of spaceship and set display to none. Um, and that's just to hide it because otherwise you're going to have you know, this, this image actually showing, you know, below, you, you don't want to have all your images showing below, uh, your canvas. You, you want those to be, you know, the user doesn't want to see those. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, in future tutorials, we're going to be covering texture atlases and animated sprites and things like that. Uh, this method I'm using here, where we're just, you know, having an image for everything you want to draw, this will work if you have a really simple game, you know, maybe a Space Invaders game, you know, where you have effectively like five to ten different images that you're using. Um, you know, so if you want to do something quick and dirty and you don't feel like, uh, you don't feel like buying, you know, some, or using some sort of texture packer or, or other texture atlas generator. Um, you can go ahead and just put each of the individual images as image tags uh, into your uh, HTML, and then you can access them as I'm about to show you. You know, you grab them through the DOM, and then you can just render them to the canvas uh, as I'm about to show you. So if we want to render this guy, this image that we grabbed out of our DOM using document.getElementById, we're going to have to go back up to our game loop and we're going to have to uh, to draw this guy in here. So let me, we could do that pretty simply with a context draw image call. So stick that guy in there and if we run this, it just draws this spaceship that I created up here at the top. Okay, so uh, now let's, let's actually try and do something like move this guy around. All right. So, um, in order to move it around, we're going to need an X and Y coordinate to move it to. Don't pause. I want to stop. So we're going to add a couple variables for an X and a Y value for our spaceship up here, you know, um, and I'm actually going to cut these to five because I want to demonstrate something. So instead of 50, let's let's set it at five. And then we need to add translate into our game loop. Now, the way the, the context works um, is when you when you call this translate, it actually doesn't just move your image, it moves the whole canvas. And then you draw the can the image to the canvas. It, it you kind of have to almost think of it as 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 a little bit backwards um you know from you're not actually just translating your spaceship it, it's like uh, let me let me see if i could do a, an example okay so um rather than uh say deciding you know where to draw something on the xy coordinate you have to like you know, when you draw to the canvas, you know, let's say you start kind of here, you actually start in the corner, but, you know, if you just drew without translating, it would, uh, it would say, draw something, let me get my brush, like right in the middle, like here, you know, and you don't, uh, that's not like, you know, you don't really tell the canvas, oh, I want to draw in a specific point. You kind of like, move everything under the canvas over and then draw. And then the next thing you want to draw, you move the canvas over again and you draw again. So consequently, if, if you, there's a few things you have to do um, when you're drawing to uh, the canvas, if you want like not everything to move. So let's just say, um, you know, I, I put in translate by five, you know, I would draw something up here. And then the next time I translated, you know, I'd translate by five again, and it would draw it here, even though my translate is always, you know, the same, and then translate five more, and it draws here, and translate five more, and it draws here. And, and that's, that's not what we want. What we want is, you know, we want to kind of reset the canvas to its original position you know, up here, and then move it five, and then draw, then reset it to its original position, move it five, and then draw, you know, I, I, it's kind of confusing, um, but, you know, the basics are, you're not, you're not actually telling it where you want this guy to draw, you're like, you're like moving the whole canvas, drawing there, and then, you know, so w what's going to happen, if I tell this to translate to X and Y, and then draw my image, 
is every time through this loop, it's going to move it by that X and Y value. So let me just show you how this is going to turn out. So it's just moving by five each time all the way down until it's off the screen. And that's, that's not what we want. We want to control where it is on the canvas specifically. So the way we do that is we have to save the context. We have to, we have to actually, before we translate it, we have to save the context. And then after we've drawn it, we need to restore the context to what it was. And, you know, my basic explanation of what that is doing is, you know, so you, you, the context is, you know, maybe uh, initially set up so that, you know, here's your position of your context. And you're like, okay, uh, so I want to draw that ship, you know, at 5.5, five, so you move the context like we discussed, you know, and then, um, and then you draw it, you know, at 5.5. At five, five. Uh, but the next time, you know, after you've cleared the screen, the next time you want it to, after you're done drawing it, you want to set the context back to where, you know, to where it was originally. That way, the next time you move it by 5.5 five and draw, it's it's in the same place. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, if it is, contact me on Twitter. I'll try better to explain it. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's kind of how the context works. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is save and restore and then every time through it should it should draw it to that x and y value of five uh, let me save this and no nope, save okay so it's always in the same place all right so now we want to do the keyboard input stuff um which you know because we want to be able to move that guy around um so I've set up some functions. The way this keyboard input class basically, um, it sets up callbacks between uh, key codes, HTML key codes. Um, actually, I think they're ASCII key codes. But anyway, they're key codes you use in JavaScript and HTML. Uh, so I set up these callbacks between, you know, whatever function you want to send to it and uh, those codes. So we're setting up these callback functions. And this is... This is ship up, so when you want the ship to go up, it subtracts 2 from the Y. When you want the ship to go down, it adds 2 to the Y. When you want it to go left, it subtracts 2. Uh, and when you want it to go right, it adds 2. And the reason that going up subtracts from the Y is because, uh, if you're not familiar for it, with it, the, the origin is actually in the top left of the canvas. Um, that confused me a long time ago when I first started doing this stuff, but, you know, it, you get used to it. It's no big deal. Uh, so now we have our functions, and I'm going to add the key code callbacks after I create my keyboard input. So this is basically setting up a callback when there's an ASCII key code of 37 that comes in. And I have these key codes listed. Um, Let's see, where's my list of key codes? Basic keyboard input, oh, here we go. Here's the key codes. All right, so here's here's a table of key codes. Um, so, you know, the, uh, the left arrow is 37, the up arrow is 38, right is 39, down is 40. But I also set up A, S, D, and F. Um, so that, or it's not A, S, D, F. A, uh, w, A, S, D, you know. So if you wanna use um, your left hand, Instead, which, you know, you could, um, then you could use those key codes instead. But I've, I've got a table of key codes here um, on my website if you, if you don't know which ones they are. So um, I'm setting up these callbacks. So this one, if you hit left, it calls ship left. Also, if you hit A, it calls ship left, which, you know, is, is this. And the, the keyboard, uh, all this keyboard input is this keyboard input class handles all of this and all you have to do is set up these callbacks and it should go So let's see Make sure that actually works and there we go. So hitting down The ship's moving down. I hit up the ship moves up. I hit right the ship moves right I hit left the ship moves left. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a fairly short tutorial because uh, I think it's going to take uh, quite a bit longer to do like the texture atlases and the um, 
the tutorials for uh, animated sprites. So I just want to, you know, give you the basics today. And this is just, this is just how you render an image to the canvas, how you can move it about, you know. Um, and uh, I will get on the uh, Texture Atlas video tutorial very soon. I have, I currently have the text version if you want to look it up on my site. Uh, but um, anyway. Uh, that's all for now. Let me know on Twitter if you got any questions and or on uh, YouTube. All right. Thank you very much. And please subscribe.